Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Time for another Deep Space Update compilation of news from the last week or so. This was supposed to be recorded on Saturday, it moved to Sunday, and now it's Monday. But look, that just means we've got more rocket launches to talk about. And, you know, we've actually had a very busy week, and it started out with Atlas V finally launching the Space Test Program 3 satellite. That's a pair of satellites that went to geostationary orbit, hosting a whole bunch of different uh, experiments. One interesting part of this launch was that they used direct injection with the Centaur upper stage, which meant normally geostationary orbit, you boost it into a transfer orbit and let the payload go. But in this case, they held onto the payload and relit the Centaur about seven hours later once it, once it had reached geostationary orbit. And that was, a, I believe, the longest flight for a Centaur demonstrating new capabilities. Um, Rocket Lab launched an Electron with the Black Sky 14 and 15. There was the Falcon 9 uh, XP launch, which of course I have a great video all about that. But of course, one of the, the more newsworthy launches this week was the Soyuz MS-20 launch uh, with, uh, you know, Yosaki Maizawa and his permanent smiling face. Uh, it's been very cool to watch him get all excited about this and publish some amazing photos from space, including this great time lapse he took on his iPhone. This is the first time we've actually had two uh, space tourists visiting the space station at the same time. Um, elsewhere, Russia just uh, in the last 24 hours launched a Proton. It was our second Proton flight of the year and it carried a couple of Express AMU communication satellites. These are Russian G GEO communication satellites that are built by Russia, but they use payloads for communications that are actually built in Italy. Um, China launched their 400th Long March rocket on Friday. That was a, a Shijian 6 payload carried by a Long March 4B. Their private corporation, Galactic Energy, launched five satellites on their Series 1 rocket. That's a, the first Chinese private company to launch, uh, to, to reach orbit twice. And their rocket is like a four stage solid rocket. It's about 33 tons, 20 meters long and it'll put about 300 kilograms into uh, you know, sun sink orbit. So this makes it roughly comparable to the Electron in terms of launch capabilities. And also, I think so, I haven't checked, but I believe that a Long March 3B was supposed to be launching right about now. Uh, we don't know anything about this payload, but it's worth mentioning. Now, over the weekend, the, you know, the, on the news or whatever TV was carrying the launch and the flight of NS-19, Blue Origin's New Shepard. This was the first flight with six people on board. It had, you know, host of Good Morning America, who was apparently a football player or helmet ball, whatever. Laura Shepard, uh, who was daughter of Alan Shepard, and then a bunch of other people. Dylan Taylor, Lane Bess, Cameron Bess, even Dick. Six people in space for a few minutes. Uh, it was cramped in the capsule, but they did set a record of 19 people simultaneously in space. Eight of them were tourists there. Eight space tourists up there simultaneously. And what also came out this week is that they are probably the last group of people to get commercial astronaut wings. There had been some discussion earlier in the year when the FAA changed the requirements for the commercial astronaut wings. And it looked like the people that flew on these flights wouldn't get their astronaut wings. Well, they've now changed the rules to say, okay, well, everybody that flies above 100 kilometers or above 80 kilometers will get their wings, but we're ending the program January 1st or December 31st. So it's unlikely that anybody else will get it unless Blue Origin can turn its vehicle around and maybe do a special for somebody with enough money. You never know. But yeah, uh, that's that's interesting. Of course, astronaut wings or the astronaut pins, those are still awarded by the companies, uh, you know, Blue Origin. And I believe the Association of Space Explorers also has a suborbital badge or pin that you can, you know, obviously I think you have to buy membership to get them. Now, elsewhere, of course, as I mentioned last week, NASA were announcing its new class of astronauts. And we had 10 absolutely phenomenal in individuals. And the day later, I got my official rejection letter. So I'm now a rejected astronaut. But frankly, if I was accepted, I, I would definitely be feeling a serious case of imposter syndrome. They, all these people were just absolutely amazing. I'm not going to go through the whole lot, but like, 
Uh, Nicole Ayers, she is like one of the few women that's flying the F-22. Marcos Berrios is from Puerto Rico, who's a US uh, Air Force test pilot. And Neil Menon was, uh, he's the lead flight surgeon at SpaceX, amongst other things. There's an Olympic cyclist, Christina Birch, who if you look actually at our profile on the, the cycling page, it says that she's a self-proclaimed coffee snob, which, you know, by the way, Christina, when you get to the space station, Yesterday's coffee is today's coffee. And uh, Denise Burnham, um, she is an actual oil driller. You know Armageddon where they're like, well, we can't train astronauts to be oil drillers as fast as we can train oil drillers to be astronauts. Well, she's gonna do both, which is kind of hilarious. She actually had like a cool like Instagram and social media where she covered all her flying stuff. I mean, she flew everything. She flies helicopters and small planes and para wings or whatever. Um, but that's all gone for now. I hope they bring some of it back. Now, over in Russia, they finally announced that their sole active female cosmonaut, Anna Kikina, is going to fly. She's going to be the first cosmonaut to fly on Dragon. So they're doing the seat exchange. She's not getting a Soyuz, she's getting a, a Dragon. And so that's actually going to be pretty cool, I guess. Um, you know, she's not the first cosmonaut, by the way, to never fly on a Soyuz, but still go to space. There was a couple of cosmonauts that flew only on the space shuttle. Um, out on the moon, the, the U-2, uh, two, I believe, the, the rover that was landed by Chang'e 4 is, it spent several days on the lunar surface, or sorry, it's several months, it spent several years on the lunar surface, what am I saying? But, um, they, they, they showed this really cool picture of what looks like a mystery house. At least that's what how it's being transcribed from Chinese. We don't know what this is. It, it's probably just a rock that looks interesting in this shadow. I mean, I've lived through the face on Mars, let me tell you. Uh, so they're actually going to get closer to investigate that. But let me tell you, this photo, the meme game has been strong on this one. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, China's space transportation company, they also conducted a successful test flight of the, the Tianjin-1, which is a supersonic rocket plane which they want to carry passengers to space. And this is just like the uh, Chinese version of Blue Origin or Virgin Galactic. Um, Astra, the local rocket company, they have announced that they're going to be flying their next mission, which is mission number eight, or balls eight, as I might say, from Florida. They've flown all their previous flights from Kodiak in Alaska. They're now going to be at Slick 46C at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, or Space Force Station in Florida. Uh, and their mission is going to be carrying Ilana, that's the experimental launch of nano satellites. In, uh, that'll be five small satellites built by various university teams. So that'll be uh, their first actual paying commercial launch, which is kind of cool. SLS uh, is probably not going to roll out before the end of the year now because they are having a problem with one of the computers on one of the engines. So the RS-25 engines, one of the things that was changed was that they switched over the old shuttle computer hardware for a new generation of computers. I mean, this happened previously. The shuttle computers started out as these like Honeywell processors and then were upgraded to 64,000 CPUs. Now it's a New generation and a whole new generation of problems. So they're trying to figure out why one of their engine computer isn't working correctly. I'm hoping they don't have to take out the entire engine to fix this. Uh, good news is the Hubble Space Telescope is back online as all its instruments are working again. This is the second major outage of the HST this year. And uh, frankly, you know, uh, I really hope that it it, it keeps operating because its data is really good, even although we are having JWST flying to space very, very soon. There was a video showing it getting fueled. So they're, they're committed. This thing is now full of the toxic goo that will help it navigate in space. France. France finally basically made it clear they're going to com compete with SpaceX. They're going to, they're actually going to build a reusable booster. So the thing is, space in Europe is kind of interesting because you have ESA and Ariane Space and all the different countries communicate to these, but the individual countries also have their own little side projects going on. Like Germany has uh, Rocket Factory Alsberg and you know Britain has Orbex. 
So France is creating a rocket called Maya, which is a methane-fueled one-ton payload reusable rocket. And this is basically their way of trying to compete. And yeah, it's going to be the first of these European rockets that actually has reusability baked into it. Uh, I mean, of course, this is alongside Ariane, which is still doing Ariane 6 with no reusability. Finally, in, well, literally in the last few hours, Time Magazine named Elon Musk Person of the Year, which, of course, has led to strong reactions from all sorts of people that love and loathe uh, the individual. But um, let me tell you, I'm more concerned with the quality of the article. There's one moment, uh, there was one paragraph that was highlighted where they managed to squeeze in a ridiculous number of factual errors about it. But that's nothing compared to the photograph at the top of the article about the Inspiration4 crew, which the title is Meet the First Civilian Astronauts. And the photo features Jared Isaacman or um, Haley Arsenal, Cyan Proctor, and not Chris Zimbrowski. It features photographer John Krause for some reason. Like, this is the print version. How do you make that kind of mistake? Okay, th this is all I have for this week. This has been a real, like, fast rundown. But uh, yeah, see you next week with some more space news. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.